from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of this Mass today is made possible by a contribution from the sisters of Les Filles de la Providence, the Daughters of Providence in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And the Mass is offered for all consecrated women and men of the world during this special year consecrated to religious life. Also for their special intentions and the intentions of all who participate in this televised daily Mass. And we know that the Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across this country, and they join with me in thanking you for the gift of this telecast. And so we begin, as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. We acknowledge that we gather this day, and we are in the presence of our God, a God who gifts us and has continually gifted us so much, and yet we want to acknowledge that and say thanks, but we haven't done it by our witness of our lives and perhaps our words. And so we ask forgiveness. We ask forgiveness of God. We ask forgiveness of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the workings of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior, and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my loyal child, in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. I must say, I, I love Paul, and we begin, Paul's letters begin with a blessing. When we look at the letter to the Romans, to the Corinthians, the Thessalonians, the Ephesians, the Philippians, Paul always begins with a blessing. And he extends to those communities, to those churches, a blessing of peace and a blessing of grace. For Paul, grace is something unearned and undeserved, but it always speaks of God's immense generosity. In the New Testament, grace implies universality. As Paul uses the word grace in connection with the reception of the Gentiles into the family of God, and he gives thanks to God for that grace that was given to them. It was by grace that God called him, and it's the same grace given to him by which God enables him to write so boldly to all of the churches. Peace, peace was the normal Jewish word of greeting. And in Hebrew thought, it expresses not simply the absence of trouble, but rather the most comprehensive form of well-being. It's everything which makes for a person's higher good. It's the state of a person when one is in love with God. Those were Paul's desires for his readers. But all of Paul's blessings, in its own, or not all of Paul's blessings, it's only in the blessings to, to Timothy and to Titus do we find another word. And it's in this letter today that we find the word grace, peace, and mercy. If mercy is mentioned, as the new word in this apostolic blessing. In Greek, the word elios, and in Hebrew, chesed. Chesed is the word which is often translated as loving kindness. And when Paul prayed for mercy in Timothy, he's really saying, Timothy, may God be good to you. But there's more to it than that. Chesed, the word in Hebrew, is used in the Psalms no fewer than 127 times. And time and time again, what it has the meaning is, it's the meaning to, of help in the time of need. It denotes God's active intervention to help. It's the coming down of the Most High to help. In Psalm 40, the psalmist says, your steadfast love, your faithfulness ever preserves me. In Psalm 57, God will send forth steadfast love and faithfulness. Psalm 86, God is abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And in the first letter to Peter, it is by God's abundant mercy that he has given us the living hope of the resurrection. God's mercy is really a way of saying it's God's action, God's activity to save. As Pope Francis said yesterday, a second word for mercy is love. It may well be that Paul added mercy to his two usual words, grace and peace, because Timothy was really up against it. And he wanted one word to try to tell him that the Most High was the help of the helpless. But in all of his letters, Paul was always encouraging, he was always affirming his readers to be faithful disciples of Jesus. Paul, like Jesus, was eminently concerned about their ongoing formation. And that's what we find in the gospel today. Today's gospel is taken from Luke's Sermon on the Plain, where we encounter Jesus, the teacher, concerned about the formation of the disciples, who are in turn 
to be the guides and the teachers of others. Jesus and Paul are forming witnesses who must live in accordance with the faith to which they testify and who practice what they teach in their own lives. Today's gospel is really Jesus' concern for integral consistency of the disciples. A blind person cannot guide another blind person. If a person is blinded by inconsistencies, that person will not be able to correct, nor will he be credible to the people that he wishes to form and encourage. Jesus really requires that the disciples be transparent and consistent. And the moral authority to proclaim the good news can only be based on the truth and consistency of our words, our attitudes, and our actions. I really want to congratulate Bishop Don Bolin of Saskatoon, who is the head of the Commission of Justice and Peace of the Canadian Bishops, have produced a wonderful document entitled A Church Seeking Justice. It speaks of the challenge of Pope Francis to the church in Canada. That teaching, that formation is ongoing. And if you have a chance to look at the document to get a hold of it, I certainly would encourage you to do so. It's a, it's a wonderful document which challenges each of us. You know, I think that it's important to say that that document and the meeting that we have with others has an effect on all of us. You know, sometimes when I look at the camera that's here in front of me, I often wonder who's at the other end. Who's looking in, who's enjoying, who's sharing in this Eucharist? And a few weeks ago, I received a letter from a man who identified himself as a lifer. He's a man serving a life sentence in a Canadian penal institution who enjoys daily mass. And he wrote to me and he told me about their, their community and he wrote enthusiastically about the work of the evangelization in the prison, their RCIA program, their chaplains, their liturgies. The last part unfortunately sounded too familiar when he spoke of the cutbacks in the chaplaincy services. But a few days ago I received a second letter acknowledging my initial response to him and he sent me a copy of one of his homilies that he had shared with the others. And in it, he quotes from Matthew Kelly's book, Rediscovering Catholicism. And he quotes, Catholicism is a dynamic way of life that encourages and empowers each individual to become the best version of him or herself. Quite different from the pop psychology and secular philosophies of our time. This is not something we do to and for ourselves, but rather something that takes place in and through Jesus Christ. Paul was writing about grace, about mercy, and about peace. And I think it's important that we recognize that grace, peace, and mercy. The work of God is operative today. The work of God is operative in that penal institution. The work of God is operative in what Bishop Don Bolin and the others are saying to us in the ongoing formation. I'm very grateful for his homily and for the way that he touched me. And I recognize that that work of evangelization is mutual. Our example, our commitment, we reinforce each other. And God uses us as instances of grace to always reach out to the other. Yes, we do evangelize each other. And so I pray this day that we may be like Paul and give thanks that we have been chosen trusted and embraced. And like Paul, the arch persecutor, that we too have been forgiven and chosen to be missionaries of Jesus, called to serve the other, especially the poor and the most marginalized. Please join me as we pray. In this day we place before God the inverted intentions of so many people and we're touched by the images that we see day in and day out. And so we lift up in prayer this day the intentions of all refugees in our world, all people who live that terrible insecurity, that those of us who have the possibility to do something, our governments may reach out, may help in whatever way possible. And for them and for ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for so many people who suffer from cancer, in particular the young people who are so profoundly affected by it. Someone spoke to me about a young fellow by the name of Marcus, who's just 11 years old, and what that means for that family. And so we remember in all of those families and how they're profoundly affected by this grave sickness in their lives. So for all of them, we pray to the Lord. We remember that on this day, the anniversary of 9-11, we pray that there be an end to violence in our world and that we, all of us, can become truly peacemakers, peacemakers in our homes, in our communities, wherever we are. And for that grace, for each and every one of us, we pray to the Lord. And all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. We pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created us. And when humanity was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed humanity through Christ our Lord. And through him the angels praise your majesty Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope Thomas, our Bishop, and all of the Church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And faithful to the teaching of our Savior, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer to each other then a sign of that peace. Peace, Joe. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
With those of you at home, join with me now in a prayer by Father J. Bourgeau of North Bay. He calls it quiet time. Lighting the candle this morning, I sit quietly before it. This is time set aside for God and me to be together. I wait in stillness. I listen. God listens. God is never too busy to listen. My heart is open. I come empty. I come in hope. I come in need to be made anew. Come, Lord. Your presence is creative, life-giving. Cleanse and refresh me. Encourage and strengthen me for the day ahead. Thank you for our time together. Amen. And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Lord Jesus. summer months, everything slows down a little, including our mail. Everything that is except our expenses in broadcasting the Daily Mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they say the same. So do keep us in mind, and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep Daily Mass on television.